So how do you guys weigh production versus potential? Because you've both talked about Salah and his staff, the way these guys teach and develop players. So that's got to come into forecasting as well. Yeah, I mean, we, we look at the core traits for any player, um, going back to you know, really how much they love the game. But um, ideally, you're looking for both, right? You're looking for pr the production and, and the ceiling and the potential. Um, but a, a lot of times, you're projecting on players. And you know, a lot of players, they don't run the exact scheme as us. So we're, we're projecting their fit within our scheme. That's where these discussions last week with our coaching staff and our scouts were so important to get each team's perspective on on how this player uh, specifically fits into our organization. Talk about the board. You mentioned the horizontal and the vertical aspects. Right. Yeah, that's the balance of the draft uh, is is measuring in each one of the position groups, you know, the vertical aspect, how you have that guy rated within the position group. And then the horizontal aspect is measured against the other positions throughout the draft. And when you get to the point that you have guys at the same level, that's when you go into, all right, who has the highest amount of love? What's the highest level of character and commitment to the game? Who's gonna hit their ceiling out of, out of the group who are sequenced together? Can you talk about need versus best player available? Uh, it's the old adage that we talk about all the time. <laughs> yeah, I think, it, I think it's important for us to have our, uh, you know, we go into every draft with our top 150 players and they're, they're ranked specifically for the New York Jets. And so um, I, I think I think you can you can get into trouble if you start going need versus best player available. So I think it's important for us to, to really follow the board um, and then always always take the best player available. And you specifically were asked about edge rushers in this draft. I know you're not going to talk about specific okay. players, but overall as a group, can you talk about them? Yeah, like had been mentioned previously, or I mentioned previously, is there's a strong group throughout you know there's a lot of guys in, in the first round second round and throughout once you move down throughout the draft though you know each one of their traits tend to decline a little bit or they might not have all the boxes checked but throughout the group there throughout the draft there's it's a strong group overall compared to years past but might not be the the one guy who's uh, one of the bosa brothers or a chase young aspect that that's truly the defined number one for the draft how busy has your phone been here leading up to this thing and then what's going to happen next week as we get closer? Yeah, I think it's going to pick up as we go throughout the week and into next week. I think uh, every team is, is on a similar schedule uh, in terms of finishing up their 30 visits. The last day you could bring 30 visits, uh, players in for 30 visits was yesterday. So um, teams are finishing up the finished up those 30 visits. They're finishing up their meetings with their personnel and scouting staffs. and. Now I think you'll see this week to the draft, leading up to the draft is is when a lot of these conversations start heating up. What are the final couple of days of prep like for you? So as soon as the scouts get back in, we'll have more follow-up meetings. Uh, and just in terms of setting the board, you know, it's really never set until the draft starts and, and then it resets with each one of the picks. So, you know, you, you have to be able to, to be flexible prepare for anything that can come about here within the next week and you know whether it's information you get or something that might happen uh, to a player so we always just have to adapt and adjust to it you so. just mentioned that the board really it, it can change so what happens at the end of night one say you stay at four and ten you make those selections you go through the 32 you have those 35 and 38 selections at the top of the second round. What, what happens at the end of round one that night? Yeah, so, so we go through the discussion of, of round one, whether to, whether or not there was, say, a, a run on a particular position and how that might affect us going into day two. So, uh, you know, we, we take the night to, to kind of just to think about it, step away a little bit, and then we return the next day and then go through whether or not what's, how it ranks within our board and our sequence. Do you think you take more calls on the 10th selection than the four, you know, just looking at it? Or people are going to call regardless just to see where you're at? Yeah, we'll see. Um, I think uh, you, you never know. I, I, I feel like um, when when we've made trades in the draft in the last two drafts, uh, a few of them haven't, uh, haven't been uh, discussions that happened prior to the draft. A, a few of them, a few trades have been made while you're on the clock. So... Uh, you, re you won't really know until, until until we're on the clock in a lot of cases. But that's what I wanted to ask you, is the philosophy of going up, which you did 
last year and you get Elijah Vera Tucker, but we've seen you go back on draft weekend. What, what goes into that targeting a player to move up, but also uh, how do you go back and still be comfortable? Yeah, I think you go in in any scenario, okay, if this, uh, if this group of players start to fall, okay, this is the point where we're gonna be aggressive to go up. And then at the same point, okay, if we're on the clock and we have this many players that we like on the board, okay, we'll be willing to move X amount of spots back and knowing that we'll still get one of these players. So those are discussions, those are the group, when we talk about groupings of players and you know, where, where we have flexibility. Uh, to go up and down that that's really what we're talking about final question for both of you we'll start with you rex if you had walk up music and you were drafted what would be your song <laughs> uh let's go right above it with little wayne okay. big little wayne guy <laughs> joe where are you going <laughs> God, that's a good question man <laughs> i'm going midnight rider <laughs> yeah yeah i love that song i think it's just sweet all right good midnight stuff. rider <laughs> Good stuff. Thanks, fellas.